The case study method is new to many of you, and for some people it's a source of sort of uncertainty and stress, so let's just take a few minutes to resolve that uncertainty and clear anything up. The first thing to recognize is, you know, the case study teaching is, is unlike what most of you have seen in your undergraduate. Uh, you know, I took out my favorite trip down memory lane, uh, uh, Fundamentals of Applied Probability Theory by Al Drake, and, you know, this probability course, I'd say, is like a traditional undergraduate, you know, technical course. You know, you do 20 problems on a subject, the midterm is the 21st problem, the final is the 22nd problem if the instructor is reasonable, if the instructor is unreasonable, the 22nd problem is something impossible. And, you know, and that's what you do. So you, it's a series of, you know, sort of problems that build on one another in, in a very structured way, and you just continue that throughout the course. Here, uh, case studies are totally different than that. So a case study is a slice of a vignette. And the way to think of it, it is 6 to 20 pages of text plus exhibits defining a very specific facet of a business problem. In our case, typically around operations problems. Uh, we have some background, but not the complete history of the problem, right? We're looking at a slice of a vignette. We're looking at sort of a narrow representation of a part of the problem, and that's what we're going to analyze in that day's class session. What this means, you know, in contrast to the real world, you know, in the real world, if you had a sort of a question about something, a, a business setting, you would just go ask or you would go visit. Well, we don't get to do that here. So if you have a question about the plot of the case, please don't spin your wheels. Just shoot me an email and we'll talk about it right away. Uh, you know, in some of the cases we do, there's a case I love, National Cranberry. Uh, the, the details of this don't matter now, but, but there's at this one point where like there's four lines and then there's three lines, there's three. But like when you first look at it, it's like, I don't get this. Uh, you know, if you run into sort of plot issues like that, just ask, we'll resolve them quickly. Uh, if you see a footnote, this would be like a secret tip. Uh, if you see a footnote, you should recognize that that means previous students, previous generations struggled with this issue and the case writer couldn't think of another way other than adding a footnote. So if ever you see a footnote, that's important. <laughs> uh, care about the process you follow and, and sort of to analyze the case, not what actually happened, right? We are looking at a narrow you know, slice of a vignette. There's a much bigger problem that dictated the overall, you know, what happened. So don't focus on what happened. Instead, focus on how did you analyze the specific sort of facet of the problem that we are trying to solve. And sort of, again, just always keep in mind, particularly at the start of this journey, that cases are not trying to trick you. They're not actually just fancy word problems. They're actually much more than that. Of course, as I've already said, they're a slice of a vignette. But, but they, are, they are not just sort of a fancy word problem. To see this graphically, you know, you might think that this is, this is what a, a class session would look like. You know, we're going to start at one, we're going to work our way through. By the end, we're going to get to seven. You know, trumpets are going to go off. Everyone's going to be in total agreement thinking this was like the greatest class ever. And we had all these awesome learnings. And then class two, and I picked these numbers again on purpose, we're going to do the same one. We're going to come through to seven again. It's going to be perfect. And we're just going to keep doing that, you know, class after class after class. So this would be sort of like an undergraduate analog to the case method. We're not going to do anything like this. In fact, you know, if we were sort of looking at it graphically, this would be a much more accurate representation of what the case method looks like. So, you know, in class one, we're going to look at numbers, class two, letters, class three, emojis, then currency, you know, then Greek letters. It's Every class is very different from the, from the previous class. And like, so class two, actually, we're going to do a very technical case. Class three, we're going to do a very strategic case. You know, the, the cases are quite different from one another in, in what they cover. And uh, not only that, but the flow through a class is not at all ever going to be like this. Uh, it's more accurate to think of it like this, like that, that there is this, Beginning spot we start at, we're all going to start at one. We all read the case. We all prepped the case's material. And then once we start the class, 
I, I can honestly tell you, I have no idea where we're going to go. No idea. Uh, well, no, no, that's probably a little stronger statement. I, I know that we're almost surely going to end at 7, D, J, or P, but which one of those, you know, within the first 20 seconds, I don't know, maybe within the first five minutes, I could assess a probability. But so the way to think of this is there are many paths through. So if, if we're in New York City and we're trying to drive to San Francisco, there's many routes we could take, right? And we have to collectively agree. If we go one route, that probably closes off other routes to go on that same trip. And that's very much at the heart of case teaching. Like, if we choose to take, for example, like this, what eventually ends up being this fully sort of the white path, uh, if we, like, by the time we get to B, right, there aren't that many ways we could go. We could still end at, you know, at 7 or at D, but at that point, we're sort of far enough along, we're sort of committed down this path. And that's very much a key to how this, this case study teaching works, that we are, we are going to collectively determine where we're going to go, but we're going to go somewhere. So we're not like we're not just going to spend our days like wallowing at you know L. <laughs> Maybe one class we will. Maybe one out of all the classes. But but in general, you know, we're going somewhere. Now, these the I don't want to imply that seven D J and P are all equally likely because they're not. You know, uh, you know, cases you teach enough, you get a sense of sort of where things are going and, and where the group's going to go. So, so I don't mean to imply that they're, I'm not implying that, that they're all equally likely. You know, in this case, seven is certainly the most likely outcome, but it is not the only outcome. So now we want to ask ourselves, okay, if this is sort of how a class session could work and all class sessions could work like this, like how do classes fit together? And this is really the beauty of the case study method. The way to really think about the classes is that it's like this, that the outcome of all of our classes is like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at sort of specific points in the beginning, and then we're going to take different paths through. So when we look at this, and sort of right now this is labeled you know, with numbers and letters, this is actually not just a sort of random collection of events. What it is is a set of distinct teaching concepts that we want to get across. And we need to get across these concepts in at one or more of the class sessions, but not in a specific class session. And that is really the beauty of the case method. So, so my job as the instructor is to ensure that we cover all of the course topics. Uh, I don't care in what order we go in. So there are multiple feasible paths. This actually shows you know, one set of paths after five classes uh, as an example. But there are different feasible sets right? that could have covered this material in a different order. And what I care about is that we as a group determine the path forward, right? that we're invested enough that we determine where we're going each class session. I monitor the time that we spend on each topic. Again, you know, I want to make sure that we don't just get bogged down in beta and never get out of beta. Uh, now, again, you know, in 22 class sessions, is there going to be some session where we don't get out of beta? Yeah, I believe that. But there won't be multiple sessions where we don't get out of beta. <laughs> so, uh, and that's not a challenge. Uh, so. You know, this whole process, uh, at the start, it's going to bewilder some of you, annoy others, delight others. Uh, that's to be expected, and that's why this whole process is so awesome. If we want to think about you know, best practices about how to think about the case study and how to approach cases, well, the first thing I would say is uh, immerse yourself in the case. So bog down in the details of the case. Care about the outcome of the case, right? The details are what matters. If we just gloss over the details, then there's nothing to study, right? Like what we're trying to understand are the details of the case, why those details matter. So immerse yourself in the case, bog down in the details of the case. You need to live within the constraints of the case, right? 
you know, there's always some new technology, you know, every day, you know, even for a case that was written only a year or two ago, if it had today's technology, you know, parts of that, you know, problem would no longer exist. Yeah, but that's not when that case was. And you want to immerse yourself in that case with the constraints that they had at that time. Care about the process. So identify the goal, right? You know, what's the goal of this case? What's the supporting data to support the argument that you want to make? Uh, you know, what's your know, first sort of solve the base case, you know, the existing situation, then formulate alternatives based on the difference between those, that base case and those alternatives. What recommendation do you make? Be concrete, be specific, right? Make it actionable. Think of this as a test simulator, a safe place to learn, explore, make mistakes. Honestly, the best case outcome is that you make some mistakes because here the stakes are low, right? Uh, and we can all learn from it. So this whole process is going to be awesome and I look forward to taking this journey with you.